it's time for me to change the strings on one of my guitars and do a setup. And I try to make all my guitars feel about the same as far as playability goes. But one thing I've always just guessed at is the truss rod adjustment. What I've always done is just look down the neck using the strings as a sort of straight edge and tightening or loosening the neck to make it almost just as flat as the strings. I prefer the neck to be as close to flat as possible, almost no curve at all. I've seen videos and read where people tend to say an acceptable range, if you were to gauge this, is between 5 and 10 thousandths of an inch. And some even go higher or lower. So I'm guessing what I prefer is going to be on the lower end of that range. But one of the only ways to find out for sure what my relief is would be to buy one of these neck relief gauges which is basically a depth gauge attached to like a short beam or whatever that rests on the frets of the guitar. Well, I can't exactly afford that. I've also seen videos where people use a digital action gauge to check the neck relief. And while it can be a bit more cumbersome to use, it seemed more realistic for me to design and print something similar to that. So I started searching for a depth gauge and stumbled on this cheap tire tread gauge on Amazon. The way this works is, you would set it on something like tire tread, and push down on the ruler up top until the plunger bottoms out. And there you have your depth. The way it needs to work as a neck relief gauge is by getting the plunger to rest on one string. But the way it is out of the box would make it extremely unbalanced and unreliable. Just a pain in the butt. So I grabbed a piece of paper and traced the outline of the gauge and jotted down my measurements before hopping into Fusion 360. And this is what I came up with. It's basically half of a shell all the way around the backside of the gauge with a channel for the string to go through as well as a channel for the fret wire to go through. And there's a little 3mm screw hole that will help hold the gauge in place. And since the plunger is quite thin and flat, I also made this little cylinder to give it a bigger footprint on the end, just so that I'm not fiddling with it trying to get that little tip to rest on a guitar string. I did test print this standing up without supports, but I used brims on each leg to help hold it in place, and it turned out fine. The final print, however, I turned it on its side and printed it with supports and a skirt instead of a brim to see if it would turn out any better, but the end result was pretty similar. So whichever orientation you want to print this in, it should be fine. Alright, and here's what it looks like printed out. Next, I used an M3x12 screw to help hold it in place. A shorter screw might work, I just grabbed this one first. And now to get the little cylinder on. I just set the plunger directly on the hole and turned my soldering iron to a low temperature and touched the plunger with it. Eventually it got warm enough to push in and stay in. Then I just gave it a second to cool off. When using this gauge and adjusting the truss rod, you should really do it like this in the playing position, because there's nothing pushing on the neck. But in order to show you a close-up, I did lay the guitar on my neck rest and videoed from the side. I put a capo on the first fret, then held down the fret where the neck meets the body, in my case, the 17th fret. Then I let the plunger rest on the string and zeroed the gauge. Then I pushed down until the string hit the fret, and voila, I had my neck relief. Just over five thousandths of an inch. 
Like I thought, I assumed I would be on the lower side of this suggested range, and I was right. All in all, like I said, it's a more cumbersome way of doing this, but it also wasn't $150.